the world was young. The first animals lived in Africa, in a land filled with magical possibilities and stories. Stories that have been handed down from the first people who understood the stories that the animals told to them all the way to us today. And today, you shall hear one of those very stories the story of Imbila the Rock Dassey. Look, there is Imbila. Can you see him? Over there, he's hiding in the rocks. Can you see him? Can you see him too? <laughs> there he is again. He is brown and furry and small. He has black eyes and a tiny, tiny nose and four little legs with pads on the feet, perfect for slippery, steep rocks. He looks almost like a big mouse, except he has no tail. Why does Imbela have no tail? Many years ago, my Gogo told me the story of why Imbela has no tail, as she was told herself many years before that. And now, it is your turn today to hear the story. Once upon a time, Imbela was sitting on the high rocks, basking in the hot African sun, when suddenly he saw many, many animals. They were all marching through the field below him. In the front were the small animals. They were all happy and jumping. Some were as small as Imbila, Others had four legs and horns and ran very, very fast and could jump very high. They were led by Infine, the dancing baboon. He always liked to lead the dance in front of all the animals. saw all this and went down to greet his friends. He asked Infine, Why is everybody so excited and where are you all going to? Infine looked at him surprised. Oh, Imbila, don't you know? 
Today, we are to go to the river where Mamlambo, the river spirit, will give us each a tail to wear so we can hang on trees, walk without falling, swat the flies, and be made beautiful. Come and march with us. Imbila shook his head. That sounds nice, he said, but I want to lie here and enjoy the warm sun today. Maybe later, after the midday meal, I will come. So the animals marched on and Imbila went back to the rocks to lie in the sun, enjoying how warm it was. away in the distance, the animals could barely be seen as they marched on. The warmth of the African sun felt so good to Imbila as he stood up to stretch and yawn. They don't know how fine it feels to relax in the sun rather than march all day, he thought. Then he saw more animals. These were big animals, moving very, very slowly. There was an elephant, a rhino, a buffalo, and a giraffe. They all were marching too in their stately strides. He called down to greet them and saw that the elephant was his friend Nglovu. Nglovu knew it was a long way for the little Dassi to march and kindly asked Imbila to climb up on her back and go with them to get a tail. Imbila shook his head again. He thought that after the midday meal, he would like to go and play in the shade of the marula tree and enjoy its delicious fruit for dessert. So told he Nglovu. Maybe just before the sunset, when the birds sing, that's when I will go to the river to get my tail. Then Nglovu and the other large animals continued their slow march away towards the river, leaving Imbila to his plans. As the sun was about to set, the birds in the trees started their song. They too were flying to the river to sing with the frogs for Mamlambo, as this was such a special day. They knew 
they would also get their own tails from the river spirit to match their feathers. Imbila closed his eyes, savoring the last taste of the succulent marula fruit he had just eaten. He felt so full and lazy. He couldn't even dream of starting a long march to the river. Imbila told himself that Mamlambo would surely understand. In the distance, Mamlembo, the river spirit, began her magic ritual. No one knew what was going to happen. She rose from the water and beat her great stick on the river bank. The earth rumbled. Nothing happened to the animals at first. Then Umfene noticed that the littlest of the animals, the mice, were running around with tails. Now all the animals looked behind their backs and saw they too had tails. Amazed, they started dancing all together with happiness and joy. was not bothered by all this noise from the river. He was so tired and only wanted to go to bed. He promised himself he would go to the river spirit early the next day. Then he would get his own very, very special tail. He looked up at the night sky and saw the first of the evening stars. Imbila's eyes grew heavy with sleep and he smiled and fell into a world of dreams. He dreamed of what his own special tale would look like. woke up early the next morning and started his own march from his home in the high rocks. He marched all the way by himself down the long path 
to go and see the river spirit. everywhere, but the river was empty, except for the fishes swimming. They were enjoying their new tails. Then Imbilla saw the birds high above were flying, also with beautiful tails. In the distance, he could see Imfene and all the other animals admiring their special tails. Imbilla was sad. I should have come earlier, he said to himself. When the other animals saw that he was sad, they came quickly to him. You are still our friend, even though you don't have a tail, cried Mfene. Nglovu trumpeted in agreement, and they all danced with Imbila as they accompanied him all the way back to his home in the high rocks. He learned a lesson he never forgot. Don't leave for tomorrow what you can do today. And that is the story of why Imbila has no tail. Let's all dance together like Imbila and his friends. <laughs> <laughs> 